to take this opportunity to acknowledge the concern of those world leaders and act of treason is as serious as it is grievous. It is an assault on one's country and a deadly affront of one's fellow citizens. Those who describe Chief Abiola as a political prisoner seek to, to trivialize the grave offense for which he is charged. Chief Emperor Abiola cannot be in any doubt whatsoever that the election which he claimed to have won was an inconclusive exercise which had been declared illegal by a competent court of law. We must also be aware that the political parties which contested the ill election had mutually agreed to the formation of an international government headed by Chief Adel Shanekan. With my announcement today of the new phase of the transition program, it is obvious that the duration of the timetable will be determined by the time required to complete each phase of the program. For example, the major components of the transition program are the establishment of a proper independent electoral machinery to regulate party formation, delineation of constituencies and voters registration, and the resolution of the issues of the creation of new states and local governments, as well as boundary adjustments. We also have the important task of establishing a sound and stable economic base. Fellow Nigerians, in order to properly address these issues and to establish the foundation of a durable democracy. From what I heard the General Sani Abasha have said in the broadcast this morning, my anxiety, my principal anxiety is General Sani Abasha in various pronouncements has already convicted Bashonu MKO Abiola before, uh, before the trial starts. There were two instances where he came onto the air and said Bashonu MKO Abiola has committed treason and the case is still pending on, in, in, in the courts. So I believe that, Bash, uh, that General Sani Abasha is the prosecutor, the jury, and is the judge. That has always been my fear, that the judiciary in this country has been stampeded by the dictators that impose on themselves on us as our leaders and rulers. So whatever comes out of the judiciary, I know is not going to be the truth. Because I'm more worried as a woman watching General Sani Abasha telling lies, deceit to fellow Nigerians as if we are foreigners. I am sad and worried. Mrs. Abiola, what do you know of your husband's conditions in prison? Well, for one year now, the head of the junta, General Sani Abasha, has refused me seeing him. They, they, they hide under the ploy that I have a case to answer with the police. And up to this moment that I'm talking to you people, I have not seen any policeman to come and ask him what, whatever they think the problem is all about. So, and I believe it was just a ploy to stop me from seeing him. For the past one year now, I now see him through the doctor. It is the doctor, the family doctor, that goes most of the time to see him. And most of this time, he's being frustrated because on a weekly basis, we gather money to ask the doctor to go and see his heart because we know after his arrest, he has been having protracted uh, illness, different type of illness. So we made this a point of duty that the doctor has to be going every week to make sure that everything is well. But in most cases, when the doctor goes there on a weekly basis, sometimes it ends up not seeing him throughout a month, or at times even for six weeks. <laughs>